All right, the PlayStation 5. This is a big and very powerful console. This particular unit is no longer in its original color, but we'll get into that in a little bit. I wanna focus this video on the controller because as I was using it and prepping for the review, I realized that this was a very important part of the conversation. If you're someone who is kind of deciding between the new PlayStation or the new Xbox, you really wanna pay attention because this is what I think defines the entire PlayStation 5. This is its most important feature to me, so let's just jump into it. This controller looks slightly different from what I'd expected from Sony, but it plays and feels awesome. But there's two features on here that are just super special. The first are the new haptics. So we've seen controllers before with vibratory motors in them that give some kind of tactile response when you play with them, but this is on another level. So older PlayStation controllers would have motors in them, right? One on the left, one on the right, and they have different weights in them so that you could create the sensation of some kind of rumble or vibratory feedback. And they were kind of cool, but they never felt super special to me. These use a different type of motor. They're called voice coil actuators, and it gives developers incredible control over the type of tactile feedback that the player is receiving. Like you can change the vibration frequency, you can change the strength, you can do so much stuff with it and it happens instantly, right? These motors are super fast. So I played Astro's Playroom. It's this game that showcases these controllers pretty well. And the moment you step into the game, you immediately notice the new haptics. It's so weird. It's super hard to explain, but I'm gonna try because this is something that I feel, if you can't try this in a store, you just, I'm gonna do my best to try to explain this over a video, okay? So on this level, you start off on this circular platform. The platform is made of various materials, right? You got a metal grill in the center area and you have glass looking material on the edges. And as you walk on the metal, it creates this pinging sensation. It's like these short, precise vibrations for the footsteps. And it's not just the ping, you feel the ping and then you feel this like echo of a vibration but when you step onto the glass it's a completely different type of tactile feedback it's a more resonant almost hollow feel to the material it's as if like imagine this table was metal right and you had one hand just touching the metal and you tapped it the vibration that you feel on this hand it's it's different right depending on the material and if this was glass it would feel a certain way and if this was wood it would also feel a different way this is what the controller is trying to do it's somehow capturing that sensation of what vibrations feel like based on the different materials, and it brings it to the controller. It's the craziest thing. Like every surface or every different environment that you're walking through has a distinctly different feel. Like you can have your eyes closed even, and just, you could tell, am I walking through the water? Am I stepping on sand? Am I walking on wood or glass or metal? It all feels different. You can literally tell all of that stuff just feeling the controller. Now, I do think it works best with environments, right? As you interact with any of that stuff and to be able to feel it and hear it because there's a speaker and it kind of adds to the immersion, it's nice, but sometimes it goes overboard, right? So an example here is like you're jumping on a springboard and the haptics are a little too much. It almost takes away from the experience because it's just vibrating like crazy. Now, this is up to the developer, right? They can add as much of this or take as much of it as they want, but it is super cool. The other thing, and this is potentially even cooler, is the trigger, the adaptive trigger, the L2, R2 button. So on a regular controller, these are just, you know, pre-loaded with tension, right? You pull the trigger, stuff happens. But these triggers have controllable tension to them. So if the developers want, you can have resistance on the trigger. So it now takes considerably more force to activate the pull. And it's, again, it's super hard to convey in a video like this, but it is so cool. And I couldn't figure out how they're doing it, right? Are they using springs? Are they using magnets? Like, is there some kind of physical shift that's happening inside the controller when you want to have resistance? And I found this thing on Twitter and I think this is how they're doing it. So the trigger in its normal state, you pull it and it just goes in, right? There's some tension, but it's a regular trigger. But Sony has this other mechanism in here. It's this motor or actuator thing that has a corkscrew and when you don't run a current through this motor, it's the same kind of feeling, right? It feels just like a regular trigger button. But when you do run a current through that motor, that corkscrew thing now has a little bit of resistance. So when you pull that trigger, now there's tension on your pull and it feels so cool. Like I actually think you could do a lot of things with this feature. You can create game mechanics that could never been done before because of this controllable tension. In Astro's Playroom, they have it hooked up to some kind of spring mechanic and it feels so neat, like again, really hard to convey in a video like this, but if you feel it, it's super special and it really is, it's so different from anything else out there. Now, 
the unfortunate thing to this is that if you think about developers, this like implementing a feature in a game that uses this is not easy, right? It's going to take time and effort and only the PlayStation 5 does this. So if you if you're making a game that's cross-platform like I don't know, let's say Cyberpunk finally comes out on these systems in like 2077, it would be a lot of work for the developers to implement a tactile feedback system into the game just for the PlayStation 5. So it's probably gonna be first party exclusives that take the most advantage of this tech. It's unfortunate, but that's just the way I see it shaking out. Now, the rest of the device I'll cover in my full review of it. Uh, I cannot wait for that video because there's just a lot to talk about. It is, it's a really cool system. I do want to mention briefly the color. So this is a matte black finish. This used to be the white finish before. Uh, this has been skinned. Now, I thought that this would look better. Like this is kind of like an early pre-production skin, but the inside of this panel is still white. And I think that was just the nature of this skin. Some people might like this look, but I would prefer like a fully monocolored panel if I was going to do it. But what do you think? Do you like this look or do you wish? I don't know. Everyone's going to be a little different on this one. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it. Subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.